So I think we really need to have a talk about TDP. It is a really important setting for modern hardware that is pretty much at this point manufacturer agnostic. What I mean by that is whether you have an Intel system or an AMD system, this is going to be very important and it also affects NVIDIA GPUs. And TDP stands for thermal design power. And what it essentially means is it's how much power hardware is designed to use. And in the past few generations, it has become very configurable to the point where it really depends on just the specific hardware that you get but you can see some wild fluctuations in terms of tdp on the same hardware where one cpu might be configured to 15 watts while another one will go all the way up to 28 and these variable configurations for tdp really make it hard to actually shop for specific systems so what we're going to be using for testing here is going to be the hp pavilion that i have been using for testing on my channel for the past almost two years now this is rocking a Ryzen 5 5500U, and I think it's the perfect chip to really demonstrate the differences in performance with different TDP configurations. So we're going to be taking a look at 5 watts, 10 watts, 15 watts, which is the stock configuration, 25 watts, 30 watts, and 35 watts. And I just want to show you how drastically different the configurations can actually end up being in terms of performance. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to be using Cinebench R23 and as well as three different games for benchmark reasons. So let's start with Cinebench. So starting right off the bat with Cinebench R23, we're going to be taking a look at first the 5 watt configuration, which gave us a multi-core score of 1890 with a single core score of 836. Now, if we compare that to when we increase the TDP up to 10 watts, we now get a multi-core score of 4331 and a single core score of 1137. So as you can see, there's a pretty massive increase here when we just end up adding 5 more watts here so if we add another five to boost us up to 15 watts we now get a multi-core score of 5396 in a single core of 1151 so we're not seeing a monumental leap in terms of performance here when we go from 10 watts to 15 watts in comparison to 5 watts to 10 watts but it's still a nice bump that is happening there though though the single core score is really not seeing any major gains here at this point and that makes sense because what's happening here is the tdp or the amount of water that the chip can actually use essentially needs to be divided in terms of the amount of cores that the CPU has here. But since this is an APU, we also have the GPU on there. And the individual cores of that also need to be fed. Now, right now, since we're just doing Cinebench, that is only going to affect a certain amount of cores. If we do the multi-core test, we're, of course, loading up all of the cores to their maximum. So that wattage needs to be split amongst all of them. But when we do the single core test, that's only one single core that needs to be be maxed out so it really doesn't need to utilize that much power to get the maximum level of performance but now if we boost the tdp up to 25 watts what ends up happening with our multi-core is we get a score of 6429 and a single core of 1153 so as you can see our multi-core score did end up going up about another thousand points but our single core did not move at all in any meaningful way again this is to be expected because the chip is also really not designed to boost past its it's set clock speeds. So that will be the difference between a mobile part like this and whatever you have on your desktop, where a lot of modern desktop chips, the way that they're designed is they'll have a TDP set as a default, but they'll normally just be configured out of the box to just boost to as high as they can until they are pretty much temperature limited. While APUs, because they're mobile processors most of the time, just have a hard limit where no matter what, this CPU will not go past four gigahertz, whether that is single core or all core. But now if we raise the TDP all the way up to 30 watts, we'll see if we can squeeze out any more performance. And what we actually do end up getting for the multi-core is a 6634 with a single core of 1151. So single core, again, pretty much identical. Multi-core did end up getting an extra 200 points at this point, but we're getting very, very diminishing returns. And I did try to go all the way up to 35 watts, but at this point we actually ended up getting a regression in terms of multi-core 
lower score because of the fact that we ended up thermal throttling at this point. Now that's to be expected. This laptop specifically was not designed to have the hardware run with this much power through it. You might particularly have a system that can handle that kind of cooling, but very rarely will you find a chip that is pretty much budget like this in a chassis that can actually handle this much dissipation. And of course, our single core score at 35 watts ended up being pretty much identical to the rest. So the big takeaway here for sure is that there are diminishing returns to the amount of power here, but the stock 15 watts does leave some performance on the table when it comes to multi-core performance in comparison to 25 watts, which really seems to be the sweet spot in terms of getting most of the performance benefit without getting into really, really high temperature territory. Now, the thing is, this is not a universal thing for pretty much every chip out there. This is specifically to the 5500U. The thing is, is that every single chip out there pretty much has its ideal TDP to get the most performance per watt. Pretty much every chip has its sweet spot area. And 25 watts seems to be about the most ideal for the 5500U. But let's see how TDP actually affects gaming performance. So to start off the comparison, we're going to be taking a look at Bioshock Infinite's built-in benchmark. And we are taking a look at the 5 watts versus 10 watts. You can see that there is a massive, massive difference in terms of performance in comparison between the two. It is pretty much a night and day difference where at the 5 watt TDP, we are pretty much extremely starved for power where the game itself can barely even run. While at 10 watts, it's not exactly the greatest experience, but it looks leagues better than it does on the 5500U. But of course, this is kind of to be expected because 5 watts is extremely, extremely starved for a 6 core CPU and a 7 core GPU built in. So if we take a look at the 10 watts versus the 15 watts, we can see that there is a nice improvement in terms of performance, though it is not as drastic as going from 5 watts to 10 watts. So there is diminishing returns to wattage, but we're still not exactly at the sweet spot yet. We can still squeeze out some more performance here. And there is a difference in terms of the fact that the 10 watt TDP is really struggling to produce a decent enough experience here, while at least at the 15 watt TDP, you can get away with a 30 FPS gaming experience. Of course, going from 15 watts up to 25 watts does actually improve the experience pretty noticeably because now we're getting far closer to a 40 FPS average with 1% lows that barely go under 30, which means we're getting a far smoother experience here. And unfortunately, I at this point was having a bug with MSI Afterburner where it really wouldn't tell me what the GPU clock was, but you can see that the CPU is clocking higher most of the time here. And more than likely what is happening is that the GPU is able to maintain its maximum clock speed more frequently. Thankfully, this bug was fixed in the middle of testing, but that will only be shown in the very last game that I actually managed to test. But what you can see here for sure is that the CPU is doing more work and it does actually end up improving the overall performance, but I can almost guarantee you that GPU is also clocking higher here. But of course, diminishing returns starts to hit very hard, as you can see here with a comparison of 15 watts, 25 watts, 30 watts, and 35 watts. So you can see that 15 watts to 25 watts shows the biggest leap here, but going from 25 watts to 30 pretty much yields us no improvement whatsoever in this title. And the same goes with 35 watts. You actually look at the wattage that we're reaching. A lot of the times it doesn't really go past 28 most of the time. Reason being is that the CPU really isn't doing much as you can tell by the very low load and the GPU is able to hit its maximum clock speed pretty much once you get to 25 watts. It's not surprising for a title that is this old but that's why I chose it to demonstrate here because once you are able to saturate the GPU fully it doesn't really matter if we throw more wattage at it if the CPU also isn't doing any work here which in this title it really isn't. Now, the next title that I took a look at was The Division 2, but at the 5 watt TDP, I pretty much ended up loading into the built in benchmark for well over an hour and a half. It just sat there loading and loading and loading, and it never really actually ended up loading in. So I pretty much never ended up testing it at the 5 watt TDP. It's just extremely, extremely slow at this point where Windows is struggling to even just run. So it's not surprising that this title would not launch at all when it 
it came to actually loading into any gameplay. But jumping right on in, we can take a look at 10 watts, 15 watts, and 25 watts side by side here. You can see that at 10 watts, we're really struggling to even get the game to be anywhere near playable, let alone stop being a slideshow. While at the 15 watts, we're starting to get somewhere where it is at least reasonable, but certainly those 26 FPS average is not going to be great, especially with 1% lows that are barely at 20. Once we get to 25 watts, that's where our average actually hits 30. So our 1% lows of 22 don't exactly make this a rock solid perfect experience. But you can see that there are noticeable gains to be had throughout all of this. But again, it is a title that is not really pushing the CPU very much at all. And what this really demonstrates is that the GPU a lot of the time is going to be the biggest limiting factor in most gaming titles. Now, if we take a look at from 25 watts to 30 watts to 35 watts, we can see again the diminishing returns that end up happening here because of the fact that the GPU is our limiting factor. We pretty much see no improvements whatsoever in terms of average. A 1 FPS difference is pretty much meaningless, while the 1% lows see a slight bump that was pretty consistent over multiple runs, though that 2 FPS difference isn't exactly going to be life-changing, especially when you look at the differences in temperatures that we're reaching here. 35 watts is really pushing things, and that extra heat is really generating us no extra performance whatsoever in this game. But let's take a look at a title that actually does use utilize more CPU while also maxing out the GPU. And that title is of course Mountain Blade Bannerlord. This title does end up using a good bit of GPU, especially on a low end APU like this, but it also does utilize a decent amount of CPU. And thankfully at this point MSI had updated MSI Afterburner, so the newest version actually let me see the iGPU clock speed again. But as you can see here, the 5 watts is pretty much falling apart just trying to render the built-in benchmark, while the 10 watts is struggling but it is able to per put up a far better demonstration than the 5 watt TDP. But again, this is to be expected. Let's see what happens when we start to raise things up a bit. So as you can see, between the 10 watt TDP, 15 watt TDP, and 25 watt TDP, there are some pretty noticeable gains to be had here. Where the 10 watt TDP is pretty much just struggling to get 1% lows above the teens, at least the 15 watt TDP is able to break past 20, though 22 is not exactly impressive, but the bump to a 34 FPS average from 24 is welcome. But the 25 watts sees a nice bump of our average going up to 41 with our 1% lows being at 27. That means it's only slightly under 30 FPS. Not the most ideal situation, but it does show an improvement here. And now you can see what the GPU clocks are like in comparison to where now you can see that at 10 watts, the iGPU can barely get anywhere even near a thousand megahertz on the iGPU in comparison to its maximum clock speed of 1800 megahertz, which none of these configurations actually reach. But the 25 watt TDP gets far closer to that while also letting the CPU reach higher clock speeds here. That's very, very important, but let's see what the higher TDPs actually end up doing in this title. Now, what made Bannerlord a very interesting title to test out was just the fact that it actually utilizes a good portion of the GPU, but also a good portion of the CPU. And what's interesting is that there are still very, very obvious diminishing returns here where at 25 watts going up to 30 we don't really see any meaningful gain whatsoever a one fps difference isn't really going to make that much of a change whatsoever and even going all the way up to 35 watts we only see a two fps difference in comparison to the 25 watts in both our averages and our one percent lows certainly an improvement in one percent lows is more welcome than an improvement in averages but it's not really a meaningful improvement though getting closer to 30 fps average for 1% lows is nice. But just out of sheer curiosity, I wanted to see what would happen if I set the TDP all the way up to 40 watts to see what that would do. And as you can see, at a full 40 watts, there is no meaningful difference between it and the 35 watts or even the 30 watts or even the 25 watts, really. But you can see that there is a pretty meaningful difference between just the stock 15 watts and going up into these higher TDPs. We're talking about a 26% uplift in terms of 
of FPS average and a 31% uplift in terms of 1% lows. That is a pretty meaningful difference. And if you can get yourself a system that can go up to 25 watts or even 30 watts, it's going to be drastically different than someone who gets a system with the exact same CPU or rather APU, but is only capped at 15 watts. It can make a drastic difference in terms of what games are going to be playable and what you can even do with the system. This is not information that manufacturers really disclose. And this is a pretty major problem because you can have some very wide differences in terms of performance and manufacturers will sometimes cheap out so much that systems will even struggle to run at their stock TDP. And what this means overall is that the only way that you can really know this information is by looking at reviews and looking at the information that people give out there. And really, if you look at any gameplay videos with specific hardware, make sure that they do show the power usage on there. It's really important information to know anytime you're looking to buy any hardware, whether it's from AMD or Intel or even Nvidia, because Nvidia has run into issues where something like a GTX 3080 that's running at 100 watts is not going to perform anywhere near the same as one that's running at 165 watts. So always when looking at gameplay videos, make sure that they show the power utilization of the GPU, the CPU, or at least the APU in this case. But anyways, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe and check out the Amazon affiliate links down below to check out some of the systems that I've actually tested out. I'll see you guys next time.